Still pull and fire and oh! score the three. <laughs> Door Noah, Noah driving dunk on Saunders. Blocked block by Richie. What a block by Saunders. Transition triple now. He there you go. It! Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Happy Monday, everyone. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. It is now time to welcome in longtime ESPN college basketball analyst and former Division I head basketball coach Fran Fischella making his show debut. Fran, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. How are you this morning? My pleasure, uh, Spencer. I've been following you guys all year. I'm trying to be up on the Cougs best I can, welcoming them to the Big 12. And, uh, i have tried to do my best, and I think uh, Big 12 fans are really appreciative of the Cougs being in the league and, uh, uh, you know, in, in all the sports, really, but particularly uh, my, my purview, which is basketball. It has been a wild ride. And just so you know, we probably saved the best for last. We've had your friends Jay <laughs> Billis and Sean Farnham and Roxy Bernstein on. But you, you are here now. So, again, did, yeah. did we save the best for last <laughs> by having you on, Fran? As at least when it comes to the Big 12, I would say absolutely. You know, I've been a part of this league now, Spencer, for for most of 20 years, and it happened organically. You know, we uh, when I left, uh, when BYU Cougs ran me out of the Mountain West uh, because I couldn't beat them anymore, uh, I I, uh, we, we, I went to TV and we moved to Dallas, where my wife's from. And when I went to ESPN, they said, "Hey, geographically, the best place for you is the Big 12." And uh, I was fine with that. And it's turned out not only to be great for me, but uh, I've watched the league grow, quite frankly, in my humble opinion and the opinion of many others, as the best basketball league in college basketball. And I think part of that, quite honestly, is the coverage that ESPN gives the league, the players, the coaches, the fan bases. And it's been so much fun to see BYU slide right into the conference on the basketball side and, uh, you know, not miss a beat. Not that 7-7 seven and seven is the be-all, end-all, but to do what they're doing in this year – First year in the league and what you guys bring to the conference uh, tradition, history, fan base is phenomenal. Fran, 2001 was the, uh, a BYU Mountain West yeah. Conference championship. It was against your New Mexico squad. Kenny Thomas, I remember, was amazing. That's the last tournament title for BYU. We're hoping at some point BYU gets yeah. another one in the future, but we appreciate that one, so thanks for the sacrifice. And then Sean <laughs> yeah. Farnham told us, hey, are you cheating on me? You had Jay Billis on, and then we had Roxy, now you, so I can't wait to hear what Sean has to say. But the Big 12, yeah, yeah, everyone talks about it. It's the best league in America. What makes it the best, and what has uh, been the onus for this uh, skyrocket to the top of uh, the conferences in, in America? Well, it's a great question, Jeremy. I do, I do have to give ESPN a little bit of credit for the exposure um, that the league gets on Saturdays and particularly Mondays. And, of course, we're on, you know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays as well. But what I've seen over 20 years is, first of all, a commitment from the schools. Uh, and and I, I have to go back to this. When I came into the league, Eddie Sutton was still coaching. Kelvin Sampson was at Oklahoma. Bob Huggins comes into the league. He's a Hall of Famer. The coaching in this league, first off, uh, Ron Kruger, I can go on and on. You know, now we got some terrific young coaches like Coach Pope and, Jamie Dixon's not young anymore, but it's highly successful. Tang, McCaslin, of course, Scott Drew's head to the Hall of Fame. So I think, first of all, there's, this league has had great coaches, which has allowed them to recruit terrific players in part because of the exposure that the league gets. And then the other thing I would say is, over my 20 years, everybody's had to try to catch up to Bill Self in Kansas. And while they haven't done it always um, – they certainly Kansas has made everybody in this league better. You're going to find out on Tuesday night um, how great an arena that place is. I know you're very proud of the Marriott Center, but to me, Allen Fieldhouse with the uh, I hate to say it this way because you guys have the great Chris Amir Chosich, but uh, uh, Kansas has James Naismith. So yes, where would we all be without <laughs> Dr. Naismith? You know what I mean? So uh, no, no offense, I hope. Uh, but so anyway, I think the tradition of the league and Kansas pulling everybody up. Um, has been a big factor. And now you have a situation where in the last five years, you've had at one, you know, last year with 10 teams in a league, five of the 10 teams in last year's conference have been to an elite eight in the last five years. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of that this year if a, a team like Houston or BYU can get to the elite eight. So uh, the league has just grown. The other thing I would tell you real quickly, I don't mean to not monopolize here, but um, the league's not been built on one and dones. I mean, for every Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin, or Joel Embiid, 
this league has always had great uh, four, uh, th three, four, and five-year guys, yeah. and especially with COVID now. And so having said that, like, at BYU fits in perfectly because of the, the Mormon mission concept at the university. You've always got older, mature, tough, hard-nosed, fundamentally sound guys. And that's why BYU fits in for that reason, because their style of play, although they shoot a few more threes than most, um, their toughness and the, and, the, and the maturity of this team is very similar to what's in this league and what has been in this league. ESPN college basketball analyst Fran Priscilla is on BYU Sports Nation. Hey, BYU, even with that maturity, certainly learning some hard lessons as they transition into the Big 12 and specifically yeah. on the road, most recently at Kansas State. It's been a <laughs> different beast for BYU on the road, like most teams in the Big 12, but still it feels like that learning curve is extra steep, Fran. So let's just uh, start with Kansas State specifically. What went wrong on the road again for BYU against Kansas State? Well, I just got done watching the tape, and I would say that, first of all, it, it, over the course of the season, um, it is, uh, you're going to have some games where you just don't make any shots. Whether it's the defense or bad luck, you're just going to have some of those games. I thought watching the tape on, uh, on Saturday's game, number one, they, they shot quickly. Not that they don't shoot quickly normally, but I thought they took contested shots, tough shots, and they weren't going down. And then I think they missed some bunnies around the basket. Uh, Dallin Hall had a layup, I remember. I think a couple of the big guys missed point-blank shots. And then it snowballs from there. Um, so I, I was actually optimistic for, for, for the Cougs in watching the game because I thought for 25, 26 minutes, they were in that game without having a good shooting night. And uh, as we know, and you pointed out, in this league, the home team wins 68% of, uh, of the games. And the main reason it is, is the home crowds around this league are second to none. Um, I even did an Oklahoma State game on Saturday against OU. Amazing. Where they finally had a great crowd. And they played like a team that was a, a good basketball team. So, you know, I, I, I would just chalk it up to welcome to the Big 12. I will say this. The game I did against uh, Texas Tech when they had the 16-point lead, when they lost the lead in the second half, I was thinking to myself, okay, they're going to find out that in the Big 12, it's not Portland or, or Pepperdine that you got to play a full 40 minutes, especially on the road with these crowds. Because I remember the first four minutes, as you guys do, of that Texas Tech game, uh, the crowd willed the Red Raiders back into that game. Mm. And that's very commonplace in this league. That was a tough loss, uh, especially because now BYU is kind of struggling on the road. Would have been nice to add to the resume a little bit. And now BYU has, uh, they play Kansas tomorrow at Fog Allen Fieldhouse, as you mentioned, perhaps the most iconic venue <laughs> in the sport. <laughs> If you lose at Oklahoma State and Kansas State, yeah. you certainly don't feel good about going to Kansas. Granted, no one does. No one goes in there and uh, beats Kansas right now. Um, what what right. do you hope to see yeah. from BYU as yeah. they hope to compete and just see what happens? Because we've seen BYU go to Gonzaga and win before, so it's not impossible. Yeah. No, no it's not impossible. I mean, can't, uh, TCU went to KU last year and beat them by 20. Um, but the first thing is it's, it's logical. You have to make shots. And especially the way BYU plays, you've got to make threes. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. I follow Greg Rubel on, on Twitter, and, you know, he, he has the numbers down pat. When BYU's making a X amount of threes, they can pretty much play with anybody in the country. Yeah. And when they're not making threes, um, it's a different story. And you got to understand now, Bill Self is uh, not new to this, so he's going to make sure tomorrow night that uh, BYU doesn't get as, a lot of clean looks from three. But they're shorthanded. And as much as they played well against Texas, they st they're still going to miss Kevin McCullough in every game. And uh, I give, I give uh, BYU a puncher's chance. And again, when you go to KU or you go to Bramlage or you go to these other places, just like going to Marriott Center, you have to play with poise on the road. And I always felt as a coach, guys, the one thing you want to do with your team is we used to say, let's play TV timeout to TV timeout. Mm. Give ourselves a chance every four minutes to stay in the game. And let's get to the eight-minute mark, you know, in the second half and be in, in striking distance. You know, down four, down two, up two, you know. Um, now, I'll give you guys a little clue because it's going to be the first trip to, uh, you know, Allen Fieldhouse maybe ever in a while. Um, if you have a lead, you have to be up a 10 minimum with two minutes to go or you're not winning. <laughs> just how it is. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Yeah. Just telling you, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying why. I'm not saying why. <laughs> I'm just saying you, you got you got to be up ten with two minutes to go. If you're up four, you got no shot <laughs> because 
<laughs> you got a Hall of Fame coach, first of all, and then you have other extenuating circumstances. <laughs> Let's just say 13 people out on that court get affected. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so all BYU needs to do is be up by a mere 10 with two minutes to go. Not a ton to ask, That's right? The ask? Okay, then. It can, it can happen. It can happen, <laughs> but it doesn't happen often. Okay, Fran, <laughs> as we wind down, uh, let's let's focus in on, on Kansas a little bit more. You mentioned McCuller, who is, again, not going to be with the Jayhawks. Where does a team like BYU have an advantage from a scheme right. perspective against just a beast at home in Kansas? Well, that's a, that's a good question, uh, Spencer. I think the depth, you know, you're talking about a team with no depth that's going to play five – five guys uh, at 37 minutes, and then you have a team that is one of the deepest teams in college basketball. When I studied BYU early in the year, uh, my first reaction is like, damn, they got like eight starters. You know, there's eight guys that huh. you could put out there, and they, and they have because of injuries. But, you know, you look at Foos coming back off an of injury, but Ali's done well. Uh, uh, Tiki's been – that's a great three-headed monster. Then, you you know, I think Spencer was hurt for a couple games. Uh, Richie Saunders, to me, is a starter. Uh, in many years at BYU. So uh, I think the pace of the game, although they love to run in that building, uh, Kansas, I think the physicality and the, the conditioning, let's say, of BYU and being able to go deeper in their bench could be a factor in this game. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, many people don't know, you're also involved as a coach and, and uh, advisor in many ways with USA Basketball, 3x3 specifically, and you're the guy that got Jimmer Fredette connected here. What's the story of getting Jimmer with 3x3 because uh, we're excited to watch him compete in the Olympics. Well, it's going to be a you know a crowning moment, I think, of what's been an amazing career for Jimmer. Uh, we got to know each other through the years just because of basketball. You know, I was in Shanghai back in 16, 17. It was November 16 because my son, now coaches at Harvard, played at Harvard, and they were in Shanghai for a, a game over there with Stanford. And so I went to the Shanghai Sharks game and, said hi to Jimmer after the game. We kind of knew each other. And then TBT in the summer, we got to know each other a little better. Obviously, I've always been an admirer. And then I moved to Colorado Springs, and, of course, Jimmer lives in Denver now. And so I, I, t I reached out to him a couple summers ago, maybe uh, June of 23, I think. And I said, hey, would you be interested in three-on-three? -three? It's going to be an Olympic sport, and this would be a great way to cap off your career. We had lunch in Denver as you guys know, um, first of all, I got, I got to ask you guys this. I don't understand why Jimmer is the nicest guy I've ever met. Why does the, why do the San Diego State fans not like him? I never could figure that out. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Maybe, maybe. It's a great mystery <laughs> in life. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's because he dropped 50 on him, you know. But, yeah, it may have something um, to do with it. Uh, but anyway, we, yeah, but we went up there. We had lunch, and he was all, all in. And he had an amazing summer for us. Uh you know, three on three is one of those things where you're gone like four days a week, uh, two two weeks a month for about four months, five months. So he had to make commitment. Um, you know, his lovely wa wife and kids uh, were really supportive. And um, by traveling around the world with uh, with our USA 3x3 team, and he was clearly the best player, one of the best at this. He was all world, I think, this summer. Um, Jimmer helped us qualify for Paris. And so we're thrilled for him. We're thrilled for the United States. It's a new sport. It's very much like beach volleyball to volleyball, um, where you have to be good at volleyball in order to be good at beach volleyball. And Jimmer's really good at basketball. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he's still really <laughs> good that. at basketball. And he's, yeah, and he's a great, as you guys know, he's one of the best people you'll ever meet. And uh, uh, just a great ambassador for for BYU and, and uh, the Mormon faith. And uh, he lives his life just like you'd want him to. And we're excited. I'm getting to go to Paris. My son, James, who coaches in the G League, is the assistant coach of the team. And um, it's uh, going to be a real cool event for all of us. And we're thrilled for Jimmer. And I know BYU Nation's thrilled for him, too. Outstanding. We're thrilled that you recruited him for this 3x3 adventure. Good friend. Uh, I, th yeah. I think it's... Me, uh... too. We wouldn't be going. <laughs> we, we wouldn't be going to Paris... Trust me, Spencer, we wouldn't be going without Jimmy. <laughs> so it's cool. Jeremy and I are just trying to figure out how we get ourselves yeah, we're to trying Paris to get now. a ticket over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Special correspondent. I think, uh, you know, BYU TV, Sports Nation, I think 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking special correspondent. Let's you know, go. Check on Jimmer. Let's like go. <laughs> Fran, uh, we know how extremely busy you are. And uh, I've, in fact, I believe you got Texas, Texas Tech tomorrow night on ESPN. Uh, it doesn't slow down for you. So we appreciate you taking some time with us to talk about the Cougs and the Big 12. We look forward to seeing you yep. in Kansas City. Can't wait for Kansas City, guys. You know, you, you're going to enjoy it. Vegas was good. WCC, nothing like Big 12 tournament. And uh, I know the Cougs are going to be well represented. It's going to be fun. Fran, take care and be well. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Fran. All right. All right. See you guys. What a class act, Fran Fraschilla on BYU Sports Nation. He coached St. John's. He was obviously in the Mountain West and, and uh, the WAC, the end of that with uh, BYU. And he's been doing great work for a long time. Love his calls. And uh, he's got great insight on what's going on. And he's the guy that got Jimmer in 3x3. Oh, right? he, he's the guy, like, if Fran's doing the game, I will watch the game. Yeah. He's I'm, so good. And yeah, he is he the Big nice 12. Job. I can't wait to hear Sean Farnham's jealousy as well. <laughs>